Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in the next lecture, I will highlight some of the marine reptiles that lived during the Triassic period and would become diverse during the Mesozoic era. These Triassic marine animals are all members of the Leptosaura morpha, which means that they are more closely related to living lizards turtles and snakes than crocodiles and birds. Most of these groups are confined to the Triassic period, but two groups, the ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs, would continue to live into the later Jurassic and Cretaceous periods and will be uh, joined by another group called the mosasaurs in the Cretaceous. So the Triassic period is represented by these interesting reptiles that return to living in the water. The first group are the bizarre Plachyodonta, which are found in Europe and China. They have very heavy, bulky bodies with thick bones to help keep them submerged. We call this pachyostic bones. They have a row of osteoderms over their backs and thick belly ribs or gastrula. The teeth are weird. They're thickly enameled palate teeth, which are useful for crushing mollusks and brachiopods, which they likely fed on. Their skulls were thick and designed for crushing hard shelled invertebrates along the coastline. The next group are the small Pachypleurosaurida, a group of marine reptiles that exhibit elongated necks and paddle-like limbs. They're common in the Middle Triassic of Europe, although a few have been found in North America. They never get larger than one meter and likely were good swimmers with streamlined body profiles. They likely fed on fish and had sharp pointy teeth. Next up, we have the marine Thylatosauria, which you should not get confused with the Thylatosuchia, which are uh, unrelated marine crocodile relatives. The Thylatosaurs are a group of long eel-like aquatic marine reptiles that are believed to be closely related to ichthyosaurs and are well known from the Triassic of China. The next group are the Notosauria, a group that is considered ancestral to the plesiosaurs, the Loch Ness monster animals. The Notosaurs were uh, larger, about one to four meters, with more elongated necks. They're found in abundance in China during the Triassic, as well as in North America. The last group are the Ichthyosauria, the fish lizards, which are by far the most specialized of the marine reptiles for a fully aquatic lifestyle. They feature a dorsal ventral fail tail fin that would move back and forth, as well as a dorsal fin and flippers on all four limbs that could not support them on land. Hence, like uh, modern dolphins, the ichthyosaurs remained in the water throughout their life. They got really big in the later Jurassic with sizes up to 15 meters long, although most are around two to four meters in size. Hundreds of well-preserved ichthyosaurs have been found across Europe, particularly in Southern England, along the Jurassic coast, and in Germany, in the foothills of the Jura Mountains. In North America, they're found in the Sundance Formation in the Dakotas and Wyoming, and in Nevada, in the Jurassic marine rocks. The discoverer of the first ichthyosaur is the famous Mary Anning, who is considered the mother of the science of vertebrate paleontology. She worked along the Jurassic coast of southern England, collecting shells and other fossils found along the coastline to sell to tourists. But as she developed her fossil collecting skills, she began to uncover animals like ichthyosaurs and pterosaurs, which were completely unknown to science. And her work was appreciated during her life, although she never received any formal training. 
Her fossils were published in various monographs and later featured in many museum exhibits and expos. Much of what we know of the unusual anatomy of ichthyosaurs is due to her hard work. Here we see a beautifully prepared skull and the strange paddle-like pelvic flipper, flipper with the rows of ossified bones. The numerous flattened metacarpal and phalange bones give a nice stiff paddle for the ichthyosaur to swim with. The dorsal fin was completely composed of soft tissue and we know of its existence from fossils like this one that preserve the dorsal fin as an impression. The orbit of the skull features ossifications called a scleral ring, which supported a very large eyeball. This allowed the animal to retain a large eye for seeing in deep, low light conditions but also strength to support the high pressure of deep waters pushing against the eyeball. There are a large number of skeletons that feature the act of birth in ichthyosaurs, which had a vivipravus birth, rather than laying eggs. The fact that there are so many pregnant ichthyosaurs in the act of giving birth as fossils indicates a high mortality for both the mother and offspring during this time. Many of these fossil skeletons show that they were born in groups and showed a high degree of development in the infants, which allowed them to survive on their own. The act of birth preserved as a fossil is a remarkable sight, and these are some fantastic fossils. All right, be sure to highlight some of the marine reptiles that lived during the Triassic period. The Placodonts, the Pachypleurosaurs, the Thylatosaurs, the Notosaurs, and the Ichthyosaurs. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin slash burger.org. Links are found in the description below.